Hey guys, this is Austin with Walton's TV, and today we have a special guest with us. We have John Brewer from Excalibur Seasonings, and he's here to answer a few questions about Excalibur and some different seasoning-related questions. So John, one of the questions we get asked all the time, both from commercial and home guys, is what is the best way to store their seasonings, especially if they don't use the whole, the whole package of seasoning at once? We get that question a lot ourselves, as you can imagine. So the, the best way to store any seasoning product is in a cool, dry place. Low humidity um, is optimal. Humidity is not a friend of any seasoning blend because, as you can imagine, uh, it cakes so yes. there's those times where you, maybe you haven't used a, a particular seasoning blend in a in a month or so and you take it out from your 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 cupboard and it's as hard as a brick and you can't even get it out of the shaker and in those circumstances the best way to to store that that seasoning say for instance our i'll use our smokehouse barbecue as a perfect example because it's got a, it's got quite a bit of sugar in it so it, it definitely tends to cake the best way to store that, this is how I store mine at home, is put it in the freezer and you're, you will immediately eliminate that, that caking. But again, to fall back to the best way to, to store the leftover product is in a cool, dry place. And by cool, I mean anywhere from, say, 50 to 70 degrees and low humidity. So air conditioning is always great if you have that option. So you mentioned storing seasoning in the freezer. Does it does it help um, beyond the clumping aspect to store seasoning in a cooler or a freezer? Does it, and does it help extend shelf life, or is it more for just that clumping aspect? It's more for the clumping. I, I recommend that um, no one keeps any seasoning product longer than two years, and the reason being is it, it uh, not that it's going to spoil or make anyone sick, but they just like anything else, the the flavor profile or the pop tends to break down because those volatile oils that that give you that taste tend to dissipate and you don't have that same punch in your seasoning blend. So two years, whether you're storing it in a freezer or your cabinet, that, that to me is max. So if, if someone has a seasoning and it is a couple years old and it is past the expiration date, is it still safe to consume then? Absolutely. Uh, again, it, you're just not going to get that, that same taste that you did when you first bought the seasoning. And, and that's going to hold true with the processor as well. If, if a processor has a, a, a jerky unit or a, a sausage blend that maybe they overbought on that they've had for two or three years, it's better off to take the hit and get rid of it because you're, you're only going to disappoint the customer. They're not going to be getting the same product, the same finished product taste and quality that they did when, when that product was fresh. Okay. Does any does anything shelf life shelf life related change when you're talking about seasoning blends, spices, cures, or can you hold the same concepts? Those same thing? principles will hold true across the board. Okay. So in that that two years is a it is a benchmark, and two years pushes it. And quite frankly, if you've uh, if you've got any seasoning blend that that you've held uh, longer for two years, chances are you don't use enough of it to have anyway. So. You want to keep that product turning. Very true. Mm -hmm. So John, in the event of a recall, how is a customer going to know that a spice has a recall on it? Well, the the moment that we would be notified that there's some kind of a, a contaminant um, that that may we may have mixed into a blend, everything is lock coded. Every every input that we have is required by our SQF certification to be logged and documented. So every, every piece of that blend, every raw material that goes into the blend uh, is lock coded accordingly and every input is logged. So the moment that we would be notified that there's any kind of a problem, be it a contaminant um, or for, for any reason, any one raw material would be recalled, we can immediately go back and trace every every blend that, say, for instance, garlic went into. If it if it was uh, if it went into twenty five or thirty blends that particular day that we made it, we would be able to identify every single one of those blends and what it went into and which customers that it went out to. At that point in time, we're immediately going to get on the phones and contact the customer, and then in turn, we would also put out a written notice as well. Have you guys had many problems in the past with recalls or? No, not, not from our end, not at all. And I'll, I'll uh, 
credit that to our SQF level three certification and that just as I explained to you, every input is logged and um, the, the controls are so tight that we, we simply don't have an, an issue. Not to say that it could never happen, but um, given the, the requirements of SQF, it, it, uh, it's an insurance policy again and it just narrows the, uh, the opportunity for a, a recall. And, and it's not to say that um, there haven't been those times to where if something could have could have went wrong uh, and product would have went out the door that it could have been an issue because no one's infallible and we do make mistakes but the benefit of that is given that everything is is documented in every every step of our process and blending uh, there's a system of checks and balances we've been able to catch those errors before they go out the door so we isolate them before they leave the plant and and in most circumstances that's it's a non-issue never leaves our building awesome sounds like you guys have a really good track record there then yes do you guys do irradiation we don't irradiate we uh okay. we buy the the products that are that are already irradiated we get that question a lot but we, we don't grind you know we another question we get a lot is do you grind spices and and no we don't but you know the the products that we we buy they're already irradiated and so does, such. does that probably help a lot with not having a recall does that the, not it doesn't really have anything no. to do with okay. it you know now it, generally speaking if there's a a raw material recall for any one way shape or form it's from it's from a contaminant be a, a sliver of metal or okay. uh, something that shouldn't shouldn't be in there it's it's usually an outside contaminant and, and not a not an issue with the actual raw material okay